Hello and welcome to a video about confined and unconfined aquifers. This video will generally describe the behaviors of both types of aquifers. Uh, it's going to be pretty basic, but let's just jump right in. So I've gone and drawn up two aquifers on this diagram. One is confined and one is unconfined. And so the bottom one here is confined. The upper one up here is unconfined. So in this example, let's start with an unconfined aquifer. Let's say this rock type up here is a sandstone, okay? So sandstones can transmit water fairly decently, okay? They make pretty good aquifers. And the reason why we call this an unconfined aquifer is because there's nothing on top of this rock layer that's confining the aquifer. There's no seal, there's no rock unit that's kind of going to seal off this aquifer from anything above it. Let's compare that to our confined aquifer. This guy down here would be a confined aquifer because it's got a confining layer above it. And so a confining unit is basically just a rock unit with very low hydraulic conductivity. And hydraulic conductivity is just a measure of a rock's ability to transmit water. So let's call these rock units shales, okay? Shales don't transmit water very well, um, especially compared to a sandstone. So shales will act as a confining unit to this sandstone aquifer in here. And let's call this guy a sandstone too. Okay. So another way to think about this is that none of the water from this unconfined aquifer up here is going to be able to transmit down to this confined aquifer here. Um, there's certain cases where that can happen, uh, but it, in this basic example, we'll just say that that's not going to happen because this aquifer is totally confined. Okay. Let's look at the water table in regards to each of these aquifers. If we measure the water table, all we have to do is measure it inside of a well. So this here's a well in the unconfined aquifer. Um, you'll notice these little dashes, that's the screen of the well. That's where the water actually goes into the well. And when we measure the depth to water in that well, that depth to water will directly correlate to our water table, okay? So if we, if we stick a, an instrument down this well and measure the water table at right there, that will be exactly where the water level, the water table is in that unconfined aquifer. Okay, pretty straightforward. So let's look at how confined aquifers behave a little more. So let's look at the difference between up here, where the aquifer is recharged by precipitation, and down here, where the water is stored within the confined aquifer. So as precipitation falls on this unit, this rock unit, water gets forced through this unit by gravity down here, right? Water is being forced by gravity into the aquifer below this confining unit. Because of the elevation difference between this point and this point, gravity can do a lot of work on this body of water to move it down here, okay? That's elevation head. And I've got a good video about hydraulic head. Um, if you want to check that out, I'll put that in the comments there. So up here, we've got a lot of elevation head. We've got a lot of ability for this water to move by gravity. And down here, we have a lot of pressure head, right? We don't have any more elevation because we've already moved it down. But we've moved it into this confined unit, which is under pressure now. So there's a lot of pressure built up in this confined aquifer because we've taken all of our ele elevation energy and put it into pressure energy down here. So if we contrast that with what happens in an unconfined aquifer, we do have the elevation drop. So let's, let's look at from right here to the bottom of our well there. We do have a drop in elevation that's going to force water this way. But there's not much pressure being built up down here because there's nothing confining this, this unit that's going to cause this pressure buildup. Whereas here, we've got this, this unit that's not transmitting any water. So all this pressure that's getting forced down by gravity into this aquifer is acting on the sides of uh, the, uh, the confining units, okay? So we've got a lot of pressure built up down here. So what does that look like if we were to measure the water in this well here? Well, it's sort of like, what do you think would happen if we punched a hole in this confining unit here? The water would probably shoot up, right? You know, it's under so much pressure that the water is gonna come out, come out of this unit. And so when we put a well inside of a confined aquifer, the pressure built up inside this aquifer is going to force the water up through the well into the surface, okay? 
And this is what we call flowing artesian well. When you have a, a well inside of a confined aquifer and that pressure forces the water up above the surface. And so our water table changes a little bit from the unconfined aquifer, which is basically just where the water sits within that aquifer, to what we call a potentiometric surface, okay? And this right here is our potentiometric surface. The potentiometric surface is basically just where the water would flow to if you were to puncture that confined aquifer and let the water flow up as a result of the pressure built up within that confined aquifer, okay? It's basically a pressure measurement within that aquifer. You know, the actual water within the aquifer is right here, of course, along that confining boundary, but the pressure of that water is much higher. And we can describe that using this potentiometric surface, okay? Well, I think that's good for now. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.